The moment distribution method is a structural engineering technique used to analyze indeterminate beams and frames in buildings and bridges. It breaks down the structure into smaller parts and iteratively distributes moments at the joints. By repeatedly redistributing these moments, the method finds the most accurate internal forces and reactions in the structure. This helps engineers design structures that can withstand different loads and conditions, ensuring their safety and stability. It's a practical tool for designing robust and efficient structures commonly used in civil and structural engineering. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. The step test method rigidly jointed indeterminate structures. The topic that I'm going to cover today is moment distribution method. We use moment distribution method to solve continuous beams, especially reinforced concrete beams. This is a hand method which is still in use in industry. Although most of the time we will use the software to solve indeterminate structures, but we still use this method to work out the moments. The benefit of this method is we can tabulate the things in a table form and then we can prepare Excel sheet to work out the moments. Now this is an example of how do these continuous beams look like and we solve these kind of beams using moment distribution method. When this method was created, it consists of successive approximations. We initially assume that joints are fixed. Then we unlock and lock each joint in succession. And now you might be thinking that what does it mean by unlock and lock joints? I will show you the process in a minute. First of all, sign conventions. The clockwise moments are treated as positive moments and counterclockwise moments are treated as negative moments. If you are working from the left, I mean, certainly if you're working from the right, then these moments are going to be reversed. So here at the ends, you will always have negative moments. If the joints are fixed at the end. Now these are formula for fixed end moments, WL square over 12. And if you have a central point load, if ends are fixed, you will have this PL over 8. This is again a fixed end moment. These are termed as wall or fixed end moments. This method will have few terms. One is stiffness, other is carryover, and third is distribution factor. So with respect to bending, the stiffness is termed as moment required to produce a unit rotation. In terms of axial load, stiffness is equal to P over delta. But in case of rotational stiffness, we will say it is M over theta, where theta is the rotation. In case of rigidly jointed structures, certainly moment is going to develop. So that's why if I wanted moment, it will be M is equal to K times theta. As you know that this method consists of locking the joints initially and then unlocking each joint, then distributing moments. So we will consider two cases. Case number one is when one end is built in and other end is pinned. Now, what will happen if you apply moment at the other end? End A is pinned, this translation is fixed. It cannot move in vertical or horizontal direction, but it can rotate. Now we are applying a moment over here that will cause some kind of rotation. Then the member is prismatic, which means that it's E and I. E is Young's modulus, I is second moment of area. They are constant. We apply a moment MAB at A, and this will cause a rotation theta AB, a resisting moment MBA. So when we apply moment, when we try to bring it down over here, I mean, certainly this will rotate. And this will not rotate because this is fixed. Due to application of this moment, MAB, starting from A ending to B, this resisting moment is generated, which is MBA. The purpose here is to find out the stiffness. When we apply these slope deflection equations, we find out moment using slope deflection method, MAB and MBA. Now here we are simply applying the boundary conditions. And if you look at A, point A is pinned. A pin support cannot move vertically or horizontally, but it can rotate. I will put the values in these two equations. So boundary conditions are that point A can rotate because 
it is a pin support remember pin support can rotate but point b cannot move vertically horizontally and it cannot rotate as well so there is no rotation that's why theta b a is equal to zero theta a b will certainly have some value and then deflection a b and deflection b a means that it cannot move vertically it cannot move horizontally so deflection b a and a b are going to be zero so when theta b a is equal to zero if I put this into this formula, and if I put this into this formula, this is zero. Deflection is zero, and deflection is zero over here. So these two terms will go away. When I don't have any loading, then fixed end moments that I showed you in my earlier slide, that will be zero because no loading is applied. It means that this will go away and this will go away as well. And then I will work out this MAB and MBA. So simply 2 EI times 2 theta AB over L is left, which is written over here. You can see that 2 EI over L into theta AB is left, which is over here. The term that I'm going to use carry over factor that is known as moment at the far end divided by moment at the near end. So that will be half because simply I will substitute these values. So that will result in half. So carry over factor will always be half. And how about the stiffness? If you go back, I said the stiffness in beams is the moment required to produce unit rotation. So if I wanted a stiffness for point A when the far end is fixed and one end is pinned for unit rotation. So if I put theta AB equal to one, I will get a stiffness of four EI over L from here. This is the case when far end is fixed. Remember stiffness when far end is fixed is four EI over L. So remember this formula. Remember carryover factor is always going to be half. So carryover factor, carryover factor is half. We can say that MAB at the pin induces a moment that is half at the wall. MBA is equal to half of MAB. So the carryover factor represents the fraction of moment that is carried over from pin to wall. And hence the case of the beam with the far end fix, the carryover factor is plus half. The plus sign indicates that both moments are acting in the same direction. Now the next case, which is not very common case, in this case, both ends are pinned, which means far end is pinned. When I'm unlocking this joint, if my far end is pinned, then what will happen? When the far end is pinned here, there is no resisting moment that is developing here. Earlier, I had resisting moment. This means that MBA is equal to zero. There is no resisting moment. Earlier, it was fixed. When far end is pinned, this is another case. Slope deflection equations are used to find the moments at the ends. Earlier, we said B cannot rotate, but now B can rotate. The only thing is that A and B, they cannot move in upward direction. It, mean, it means that they cannot deflect. Delta indicates deflection. A, B and B, A, it's zero, which means this term and this term, they are zero. MFAB and MFBA, these are fixed end moments. These are zero. So when these are zero, if I put these values here, I will be left with this equation and this equation. From equation two, I can say that the theta BA is equal to half of theta AB over two. And if I put it in this equation, then simply you will get equation for MAB. So because MBA is zero, there is no resisting moment. So that's why I'm putting the zero over here. When I put this zero and then solve for the equations, EI and EI will get canceled. I will get theta BA equal to minus theta AB over two. And if I put it back, into this equation number one, I will get three EI over L into theta AB. This is the stiffness. The stiffness is equal to moment caused by unit rotation. So if I say this is unit rotation here, it will give me three EI over L. So when my far end is pinned, the stiffness is three EI over L. And now you can see that carryover factor is MBA divided by MAB. So far end divided by near end. Far end moment is zero. So carryover factor is zero. So in case of far end being pinned, certainly carryover factor is going to be zero because there is no fraction of moment that will be transferred to point B. And this is the reason that there is no carryover factor if we have far end fixed. 
And some of the situations we will use this, but most of the situations we will use far and fixed. So I want you to remember two things. One is that carryover factor is equal to half if far end is fixed. It's zero if far end is pinned. Other is stiffness is four EI over L. If far end is fixed, if far end is pinned, then it is three EI over L. L is the length, E is Young's modulus, I is second moment of area. And distribution factor. Distribution factor is quite important and there is a practical implication of distribution factor. And the practical meaning of distribution factor is that forces are attracted towards where you have higher stiffness, where you have bigger members, where you have stronger members. And how they are distributed? They are distributed according to their distribution factors. And how do we work out distribution factor? The fraction of total resisting moment supplied by member is termed as distribution factor. So how much a member is contributing towards load resistance that is termed as distribution factor. So distribution factor is the stiffness factor of the member divided by total stiffness factor of the joint. If the members are equal size, for example, the stiffness of this, this and this is one, then the load is going to be distributed equally among three members. And then you can say that distribution factor will be one over three because all members are of similar size. But if one member is stronger than the other, so for example, if this is two, then the distribution factor will be equal to two over addition of all these uh, stiffnesses, which is four. Then in that case, the distribution factor for this moment is going to be half. Sorry, not one over five, this is one over two. So this is the practical meaning of distribution factor. And this concept will be used quite often in design of any structure. And when you will consider the impact of whole building, then this is going to be extremely useful. I will move to the example for this continuous span beam as shown in this figure. And A is fixed, so it will have three reactions. And B is a pin or prop it has one reaction. So you could say that it's a kind of roller support. So it has one reaction. And C has got one reaction. D has got three reactions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So unknowns are eight. And equilibrium equations are three. Is it determinate or indeterminate structure? Indeterminate. Because unknowns are greater than equilibrium equations. And then I cannot use ordinary methods to work out moments in this case. I need specialized methods. And in this case, I'm using the moment distribution method. And I will tell you the process. Another thing, note here, span is eight meter. AB is three EI, BC is EI, and C to D is two EI. If the sections are different, then certainly the moment is going to be distributed according to their stiffnesses. Uniformly distributed load is applied 12 kilonewton per meter at middle span only. Support A and D are fixed. Support B and C, they are props, or you can say these are roller supports having only one reaction. CD and AB beams are stronger than BC beams because their EIs are different. The way it works that it will have initial solution and it will have complementary solution. So initial solution consists of clamping all the joints which are free to rotate. So KI becomes zero. Then applied load will cause fixed end moments. So you will have an initial solution plus complementary solution. So initially what we do as a step is that we clamp all the joints and determine the fixed end moments. So when we clamp all the joints, we have fixed end moment at B. We have MFBC and here we have a fixed end moment which is MFCB. The reason on the left we have this negative moment because this is going to cause hogging moment. This is not going to be sagging. So that's the reason we have negative over here. Again, you have hogging moments at the CB. So when we clamp the joints, it will create fixed end moments. Our load is 12 kN per meter. So 12 times the 8 squared divided by 12 will give you 64 kN meter. Now on the other hand, fixed end moment for BA is zero because nothing is applied. AB is zero, DC is zero, and CD is zero. So the next step is the complementary solution. Now we have to distribute these moments. So first of all, we have to fix everything which is not fixed. So we have to clamp all the joints so that kinematic indeterminacy is zero, which means that there are no degrees of freedom. And then we find out the fixed end moments due to applied loads at each point. 
Then we have complementary solution. And complementary solution, it consists of distributing these moments at the joints. We determine the unbalanced moment acting at initially locked joints. And then we have to unlock the joint. So steps are, the first step is unbalanced moment. And second step is unlock the joint, apply equal but opposite unbalanced moment to correct the equilibrium. And third is distribute the moment along the connecting spans according to their distribution factors and carry the moment over in each span over the other end. Here we will work with carryover factors. Here we will work with distribution factors. And here we will apply equal and opposite moment. Carryover factor is half if far end is fixed, it's zero if far end is pinned. Stiffness is four EI over L if far end is fixed. It is three EI over L if far end is pinned. The distribution factor is equal to stiffness of a particular member or joint divided by summation of the stiffnesses entering into that joint. Now let's find out the complementary solution. We have unbalanced moments. These are fixed moments. And remember, we take fixed moments as negative on the left and positive on the right. The reason is that these are hogging moments. They try to point the beam upwards so that the tension is at the top and compression is at the bottom. In second moments, tension is at the bottom and compression is at the top. What is unbalanced moment at this joint? B, negative 64 kilo Newton meter. Okay, unbalanced moment at the locked joint. Remember that we have locked this joint in the initial solution. Now in complementary solution, what we will do, find out the unbalanced moment, which is minus 64. And the next step is unlock the joint and apply equal and opposite. So what will be equal and opposite? That will be plus 64. Note that any of the clamped joints, B or C, can be unlocked first. So it doesn't really matter which one do you unlock first. We have this first step done. We have the second step done. And the next was distribute. And fourth step was carryover. Now distribute these moments among the connecting spans. So what are connecting spans here? So for this joint B, the connecting spans are B, A, and B to C. These are connecting spans. From this joint, it is going to be distributed to these spans. We have to do it in proportion of its distribution factors. The third step is distribution factors. But for distribution factors, I need stiffnesses. Now I need to distribute it to B, A, and I need to distribute it to B, C, because this is my equal and opposite moment all right this is something which i want to balance that's the reason i've applied equal and opposite and now in this step i need distribution factor but distribution factor is k over summation of k so it means that i need kba and i need kbc now how do i find kba and kbc for kba if you are at this point this is joint under consideration is far end fixed or pinned if i talk about a for BA, far end is A. Is it fixed or pinned? Fixed. fixed. When it is fixed, what formula should I use for K? Should I use 4 EI over L or should I use 3 EI over L? Now here, if the support was pinned, then in that case, I will use 3 EI over L. But because support is fixed, it means I will use 4 EI over L. Remember that for AB, I had 3 EI. For BC, it was EI. For CD, it was 2 EI. So instead of EI, now I'm writing 3 EI, okay? And the span is 8 for all of them, and 4 comes from the formula. So this will give me 1.5 EI. We have to distribute moments. And how did we get this 16 and 48? I will explain in a minute. For distributing, I need distribution factor. Distribution factor is K divided by summation of Ks. And because I need Ks, this needs to be distributed to BA and BC. So I will find out the stiffness KBA and the stiffness KBC. And the formula I'm going to use is 4EI over L. As you remember that for BC, EI of BC is equal to EI. So that's why I have put this EI. For BA, EI was given as 3 EI. So that's why I have written 3 EI over here. And 4 comes from the formula. And 8 is the length of the beam. So for BC, EI is equal to EI. 4 comes from the formula. L is the length of B to C. And this is giving me stiffness KBC as 0.5 EI. What is total stiffness entering into that joint? because only two members are entering into that joint. So can I say that the total stiffness entering into the joint will be KBA plus KBC? Can I say this or not? KBA is 1.5, which comes from here. KBC is 0.5, 1.5. 
which comes from here. Total stiffness is 2 EI. Now it will make sense the stiffness of member BA is 3 times than the stiffness of member BC because member BC is EI, member BA is 3 EI. Whatever moment you are distributing, you have to divide it into four parts. So three parts will be distributed to BA and one part will be distributed to BC. And this is what you are going to get with the help of the formula. Quick question, sir. Yes. Um, for the stiffness KBC, why did you use the four EI over L um, equation? I thought that was used when one end was fixed, but is um, support C, is that a fixed support? That's a very good question. An in initial solution, we said that clamp all the supports and find out the find out the fixed end moments. That was the initial solution. And in complementary solutions, I have four steps. One is determine the unbalanced moment. And the second step was unlock that particular joint, either B or C. Now, this is still locked. So locked means fixed. Okay. Okay, so that's the reason I'm using. That's a very good question. That's the reason I'm using 4 EI instead of 3 EI. Right. Because I have to unlock a joint at one at a time. If I wanted to find out distribution factor, for example, BA, I would say that KBA, which is 1.5 here, divided by the total stiffness of all the members entering into this joint, so which is giving me 0.75. KBC, distribution BC, I will say that KBC divided by total stiffness entering into the joint, and this is giving me 0.25. So member BA will take 0.75, 75% times 64, this will give me 48. And member BC, on the other hand, will take 25%, 0 0.25 times 64, which is 16 kilonewton meter. So that's the reason I have 16 over here. So, sir, so under that distribution factors, then, is that really just working out the percentage of what, um, of what member takes? Yes, definitely. Okay. okay. You're absolutely yes. right depending on their stiffness. If the EI for both his spans is equal, and if their length is equal, then the moment is going to be distributed equally. Then distribution factor is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And the fourth step is to carry it over to the other span. And if other joint is fixed, then carry over factor is half. If it is pinned, then it is zero. So here in both the cases, it is fixed because this is still clamped. Joint D is still clamped. We haven't unlocked it yet. So carryover factor is half, means half of 16 is 8 and half of 48 is 24. So is it, sir, sorry, is it always half no matter what the, um, no matter if it's fixed or pinned, is it always carried over half? No. Carryover factor is half when the other end is fixed. Carryover yeah. factor is zero when other end is pinned. At joint C, I already had a moment plus 64. That is the unbalanced moment. You can see that I had plus 64 at joint C. So this means that I can say that this eight is carried over and I already have 64 here. So total unbalanced at joint C is going to be 64 plus eight plus 72 kilonewton meter. This is my first cycle. In the first cycle, I'm done with this joint, joint B. In the next cycle, I will unlock this joint C where I have unbalanced moment of 72 kilonewton. And then I will follow the same process. And then when I will unlock this, I will assume other joints to be locked. No two joints can be unlocked at the same point. Now here you can see that joint B is clamped again. In the complementary solution, the unbalanced moment was plus 72. The second step was unlock the joint and apply equal and opposite. So what will be equal and opposite of plus 72? Negative 72. And then I will follow the same process. And remember that this clamping is applied to internal joints. So outside are not affected. My third step is to find out the distribution factors. So for that, again, I will find out this is CB. C stands for this joint and this is C to D. For CB, I will use 4 EI over L and for CD, I had 2 EI. For BC, I only had EI and the length of the member is the same. 4 comes from the formula. It will give me 0.5 EI and I determined it earlier as well. 
For CD, on the other hand, I apply the same formula, but EI for CD is 2EI. So that's why I replace it with 2EI. And then it will give me EI. The total stiffness entering the joint is 1.5 EI. And then for a particular joint, I will find distribution factor. So for CB, it will be KCB. KCB is this value 0.5 divided by total. So it will give me one third. And for CD, again KCD for the stiffness of the span, which is this one divided by total stiffness entering into the joint. So this will give me two thirds. It means that CD will take two thirds of the moment at the joint and CB is going to take one third. So now here, if you, if you multiply one third with the total minus 72, you will get minus 24. So that's why we have minus 24 here. If you multiply for CD, if you multiply two thirds with the total unbalanced moment at the joint, which is minus 72, you get minus 48, which is here. Now my fourth step is to carry that moment over because my end joints D is fixed and B is clamped. Uh, that's why it's fixed. So carryover factor is going to be half which means half of these values. So half of 48 is minus 24 and half of minus 24 is 12. So again, this is carried over. This is the same step. Now, because at B, we have this minus 12, the new unbalanced moments are 12 minus 12 at B and then minus 24 at D. So now I will go back again to joint B. My first step is to find out unbalanced moment, which is minus 12. And my next step is unlock that joint and apply equal and opposite, which is 12. My third step is to find out the stiffness. I don't have to find out stiffness again because I already found out 25% on the right side and 75% on the other side. That was my distribution factor. My third step is distributed. So multiply 12 with 0.25, I get 3. 12 with 0.75, I get 9. You carry it over to the other spans. Your, your unbalanced moment here is 1.5 at joint D. Okay. Then again, you will apply the same process. This was my third cycle. And my fourth cycle would be unbalanced moment 1.5 and apply equal and opposite, which is minus 1.5. And then third step is distributed according to distribution factors. And here, distribution factors are two thirds on the for CD span and one third for CB span, which I determined a little earlier distribution factors. And if you multiply two thirds with minus 1.5, you get minus one and, and one third you will get minus 0.5. Fourth step was carried over. You will be asking me a question, where do we stop? So the answer to this question is that wherever you get moments and points, at that point you stop. Now, whatever we have done, it can be written in a tabular form and I will tell you how do we do it. So first thing first, you have to write the number of joints which are in this example. I have four joints, A, B, C, D, regardless of the support conditions. You will not do it in this form. This is just there to explain you the process so that you remember it. You will write it in the tabular form. That would be the most effective way. First thing first, write the number of joints, A, B, C, D. The next thing is write carryover factors. Now, this is where it's very important. Now, carryover factor between joint B and C, because I will be clamping these joints at one time and freeing it up, uh, at the other time, it means that the carryover factor can go back and forth between B and C. Carryover factor at the fixed support at the end, it can just carry it over in one direction. It will not be bidirectional. So it, will, it can only be carried over from C to D because I'm not unlocking this joint D. This is already a fixed joint. So it cannot carry it back into joint C. That's the reason carryover factor from C to D is only in one direction. And the reason is that I'm not locking or unlocking the joint D. Joint D was a pin support. Carryover factor for a pin support is zero. So if at the end, if you have pins, then it will not carry any moment. In the same way, the carryover factor for A, support A is only in one direction from B to A because I'm unlocking joint B. And that's the reason I'm finding out this unbalanced moment. And A is already a fixed support. So it cannot carry back the moment at B. And the next step is to write the distribution factors. 
because we are locking and unlocking only joint B and C. So that's why we will write distribution factors for them only. Okay, we cannot write distribution factors for the ends. The next step that you want to do is you want to write the fixed end moments. So you will have a negative minus 64 and positive 64 at the other end, at the right end. If it was a central point load, then it will be PL over 8. Now this represents your initial solution. Now from here, you will start to unlock the joints. We found out the unbalanced moment, which is minus 64 here. Second step was to unlock the joint and apply equal and opposite. So we unlocked this joint, B, applied equal and opposite, which was plus 64. And then we multiplied that plus 64 with 0.25 and 75. But here I will write that process quickly. So I will not, you will not see four steps. So you will just see first step, which was unbalanced. Unbalanced was minus 64. Apply equal and opposite, which is plus 64. It is not written here. All right. You have to do it in your head. And third step is to, to distribute that plus 64 according to distribution factors. So here you have to calculate it in your head that, okay, I'm unlocking this joint. Unbalanced is minus 64. Equal and opposite is plus 64. Then you will multiply this plus 64 with 0.24 to get 16. And you will multiply this plus 64 with 75 to get 48. That was third step. And the fourth step was to carry it over, carry over half. So half of 16 is 8, half of 48 is 24. So as long as you remember those four steps. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. the first step is there and second step is missing. Third step is there and fourth step is there. First step is find out the unbalanced. Second step is unlock the joint and apply equal and opposite, which is not here. Once I have carried everything over, then don't forget to put this line. By putting this line, I'm done and dusted with this one. This will not disturb my sequence. So this was my first iteration when I unlocked this joint B. My next step will be to unlock joint C. 64 plus 8, 72. That is my unbalanced moment. Second step is unlock the joint and apply equal and opposite. Unlock the joint, equal and opposite will be minus 72. In third step, you distribute it. Now you can see that this minus 72 is not written here. And here you are multiplying minus 72 with the distribution factors. So third step is to multiply this unbalanced equal and opposite with the distribution factors. Then you get 48 and 24. Fourth step is to put this arrow and then carry it over. And then once you have done this bit, then always put a line. Otherwise, you will make a mistake. These are my two iterations. My third iteration will be now I have minus 12 at joint B. Then I will unlock joint B. I have minus 12. Uh, I will determine equal and opposite, which is not written here. Equal and opposite will be plus 12. And then I will multiply this plus 12 with 0.25 and 75. That was my third step. And fourth step is again to carry it over. My fourth iteration will be now I have unbalanced moment of 1.5. So first step unbalanced, unbalanced is 1.5. Second step is unlock the joint and apply equal and opposite, which is minus 1.5. Now minus 1.5 is not written here. You have to keep this in your head. And then you will multiply this minus 1.5 with 0.33 and 0.67 to get this 0.5 and 1. And simply you carry it over to the other side. Once you have done this, simply put a line and then this is done and dusted. This is your complementary solution. And this was your initial solution where you found out the fixed end moment. Now, how do you get final moments? Final moment, add up whatever you have in this column, which is minus 24. Add up whatever you have in this column, not these values. These values are not written here. Again, these values are not written here. You should get these two answers as the same on a joint. Uh, moment equilibrium, you should get these answers as the same. If you're not getting the same, then it means you have made mistakes somewhere. Why at the last uh, round on the fourth calculation, you didn't share back uh, half of zero, minus 0 0.5 with joint B? Yes. The reason I did not share it with B is that otherwise it will leave the unbalanced moment over there. Then I will have to go for another iteration. 
B, I have negative moment. If I consider this span, I have negative on the left and positive on the right. So this will create a kind of a hogging moment. Whenever in a span, whenever you have negative on the left and positive on the right side, then it will always create a hogging moment. Now you might say that, okay, this is negative at the right. So negative at the right is going to create a, a sagging moment. And once you have these moments, because you don't have any kind of loading between A and B, you connect it with a straight line. And then you connect 49 with the straight line as well. But because you have some kind of UDL, you simply draw it with a curved line. And this 96 is your simply supported uh, moment. That is from the line here to the end. Simply supported moment is WL square over 8. Next step is to find out the shear force diagram. Simply, you have to take moment about A. If you're considering member AB, you have MAB and then you have MBA. You have these two moments, which are fixed ones. Then you have the shear force times the length between A and B, which is eight meter. So simply, when you add these moments up, then you will get this answer minus 10.69. And in the same way, when you sum up moments at B, you can work out shear force in BC. You can say that moment about C is equal to zero. Now, where am I getting these values, 28 and 57? Uh, these are from here, 28.5 and 57. And for member BC, you have this vertical load as well. That's why simply you sum up moment at B for equilibrium. And then from there, you can work out the uh, shear force. And once you have these values, you have QBA minus 10.5 and then QAB minus 10.69. So you start with this one, you go down 10.69. And then again at uh, B, you have two values. You have CB and then you have BC. And then you plot these two. So these two values are here. You have QCD or DC as well. So simply, uh, you can use moment equilibrium to find out the shear forces. This is another way of finding the, the shear forces in a tabular form, which means you sum up the moments, then simply divide it by, by 8 for QAB. And you can then put it into a tabular form. The only difference here is that you have this simply supported shear. So simply supported shear will be equal to, I think, WL over 2. Thanks for watching this lecture today. Click on left side of the screen to watch another video relevant to this lecture. Click on right screen to watch full playlist on structural mechanics.